Generatopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by IVPN. Use a VPN to help prevent your online activity from becoming a permanent record. IVPN encrypts your data and DNS requests so your ISP or mobile network provider cannot monitor or log your online activity. Purchase an IVPN service today anonymously with Monero. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good night if it's night for you. Welcome to the second attempt of trying to record a news section because in the first one I didn't add the camera and I was just talking to uh, you guys with just the share screen. So now we have the camera as well. Um, today, a lot of CBDC, a lot of CBDC related news. So let's get into it. The first thing that I want to mention is a tweet from Libertarian Party betting TikTok will do nothing to preserve privacy rights, rejecting the Restrict Act, repelling all remaining provisions of the Patriot Act, and abolishing the NSA will. And the second one, uh, your property and privacy depend on the total rejection of all CBDC schemes um, which is absolutely true and everybody knows it um, or at least people watching this show know this um yeah but banning TikTok is not going to preserve your privacy rights and they don't even care about your privacy rights um but yeah rejecting the restrict act is going to and and everything else um then let's talk about um Mordenals from uh Rocknium. Rocknum is actually going to be at Monerotopia in, in May. So if you want to talk to him in person, make sure that you purchase your tickets and you come um, and you come to Monerotopia. Uh, the empirical uh, research that he conducted basically um, concluded that Mordenals can reduce Monero user privacy when their transaction outputs are included in normal transaction ring signatures as decoys. Just before Mordenal minting spiked the peer-to-peer uh, -peer pool Decentralized mining protocol upgraded to make their payouts more efficient, diminishing the net effect of Mordenals. Average effective uh, ring size fell to 12.5 at its lowest point. A nominal ring size is 16. So basically, Mordenals, you know, can reduce Monero user privacy. If you want more information um, about this study, you can of course go in the description and click on this link and read the article for yourself. You can come to Monerotopia and talk to. Um, Arachnum, or I think Dig Digun is actually going to talk about this today. So make sure that you check out his video. The next thing that I want to mention is Intercambio, which is a new privacy first, no JavaScript, no KYC exchange aggregator. Essentially, uh, you prioritize the KYC grade and thus get the best privacy for your trade. Um, although JavaScript is not required, you have you if you have it enabled, you'll be able to install the Intercambio app within the browser of any uh, device. Uh, let's actually click on on the exchange link. That's how it looks like. I like the logo. <laughs> I think it looks cool. Um, yeah, so this is really good stuff. And make sure to check it out and use it, test it, and see how you like it. Now, let's discuss Monero Run that will take place on the 18th of April. Today's April um, 15th. Now, um, so basically what the Monero run is, in case you didn't know, people have Monero on exchanges and on this day, they're, everybody's going to take their Monero from exchanges, exchanges in the same time. Um, now, should you wait until the 18th if you have Monero on exchanges? Maybe not. <laughs> I would do it right now. I wouldn't hold any Monero on exchanges. Um, I don't even own any Monero on exchanges, so I can't even participate in this. And maybe I don't even own any Monero. so. Or maybe I do. You'll never know. Uh, but yeah, if you want to wait until the 18th, that's fine. You know, do it on the 18th for everybody. But you know, definitely do not have any Monero on centralized exchanges. And you know, um, practice self custody of of your crypto, of your Monero. Uh, then we have three more articles uh, pertaining to um, CBDCs. So the IMF wants to publish a CBDC handbook in response to increasing demand for guidance. Of course, every country wants to participate in in, um, in CBDCs. Uh, they all want it. It's the future. So it, it was normal that at some point a larger organization was going to step in and create a, a guidance, a handbook um, to that you know is going to um, to fasten the process. Um, they've been already working with 30 countries and ever since over 40 more countries have contacted 
um, so far. We believe CBDC capacity development is essentially to avoid a digital divide. Um, the handbook, as they mentioned, I'm not sure if I can find it, um, it's not going to be uh, prescriptive. Yeah, it says over here, it's going to be descriptive. So it's going to be a guidance. It's not going to be, it's not going to prescribe you what to do necessarily, but it's just going to give you the information necessary for you to develop your own CBDC um, for your own country. So uh, this was, of course, going to happen and it's going to help countries develop um, their CBDCs and they can tailor, tailor it to their specific needs. Um, the Swedish Riksbank report is interesting because um, Sweden has, uh, they're already in the third phase of uh, its CBDC research. Um, you know, the Nordic countries have been in favor of digital payments since COVID, and I think even before 2016, or I'm not entirely sure, but for a long time. Um, but the interesting thing about uh, this article specifically is that, so they were able to purchase um, a car, uh, but while this was a positive sign for the potential of the currency, it raised privacy questions due to the extra information that was necessary to complete the complicated transaction. Uh, if conditions are placed on money, for example, that it can be only be used for certain purchases or, or on certain occasions, it risks becoming something more like a gift card and thus no longer like, um, like money, right? Um, so this was one, one concern. Um, and then, of course, they, they always mention when something goes wrong a little bit. Uh, they want to emphasize that no decision on the issuance of a CBDC has been made. Its decision discussion had a certain sense of urgency. So every single time, oh, okay, this failed. We're still not sure about CBDC. Of course, they're going to have CBDC. There's going to be some form of digital currency in the future. Uh, but they also mentioned that when cash takes a backseat in favor of digital services from private sectors, the Riksbank's uh, direct role on the payment market is, it is, is reduced. The Riksbank may thus find it more difficult to fulfill its task of promoting a safe and efficient payment system accessible to all groups in society. So, you know, there's going to be problems with CBDCs, but eventually they are going to come to fruition. My question is that what are you going to do with people that don't have cell phones? A lot of people don't have cell phones or a lot of people don't have, even have good cell phones. So are they going to make government phones that they can produce for cheap so that people can use CBDCs? That's going to be interesting. Uh, so I think for sure we're going to have CBDC and cash for a long time until we figure out the situation because you can't just, you know, ignore the people that don't have phones. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. So um, it's going to be interesting. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is Ripple and Montenegro. Uh, there are a few cryptocurrencies that help countries develop their own CBDCs. Ripple is one of them. Uh, Algorand is one of them. Uh, they're helping a couple of countries. Uh, but yeah, so Montenegro has been using the euro since 2002, even though they're not in the eurozone. And they tease that in January, January, which is, you know, it's not that far away. They could create a national digital currency, um, which which is crazy. So Montenegro is going to have its own CBDC soon. I've been to Montenegro actually, and uh, they're developing quite quite well. So this is going to be um, it's going to be interesting to to see. And the last thing that I want to that I want to mention uh, uh, really really quick, um, guys, purchase your tickets for Monero Tokyo 2023 every week we're adding new um new speakers uh for example uh let's see okay see <laughs> uh, the last person that i knew was uh susie dawson now we added sarang and he was there last year john murphy murphy from wow narrow uh paul Pui from edge uh we have pirate chain from privacy tech um um yeah we have pirate chain sorry i got distracted a little bit um then we have um tuxedo um as a workshop professors that we had just added uh rhino we have uh, pacha bazaars and monero marketplace media partners we just added asterio and djs so we have everything um now if you want to come and you want uh, a discount where is it okay you click here you click add to cart then you view cart if you're right pony <laughs> and you'll buy the coupon you're gonna get again 21 it's still there guys so make sure that you use the the discount 
this was a new section. Have a good weekend. Have a good week. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah.